Listener, this is Will. If you're hearing this, it means that something something has happened which I feared for a long time. This might be the last time you ever hear my voice, and I know some of you are celebrating at that. But just know, just know that I loved every single one of you the same. You all mean so much more to me, and because because I'm gone, just know that Sean and Jason don't give a shit about you. They literally said, I said to both of them, I said, do you guys know how much our listener means? And they said, I don't give two fucks about our listener. Jason said that as he slammed the door on his European car. Anyway, I love you. And welcome to an all new Smart List. Smart List. Um, we had our family reunion. I just Didn't got ask. in. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's ready with their coffee chat? Let's hear it. How was it? Any I did. Fights? I just got back. Did anybody drink into a fight? No, 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 no. Nobody fought. It was great. It was fantastic. It was lovely. Jay, you didn't call. I called in. I got to say hi. I got to meet some of uh, the family. I got to meet his niece and her what boyfriend. Do you, mean you called in. I don't understand. FaceTime. I, I FaceTime with Sean. We keep in touch and say hello. Yeah, this is you how really normal do. human beings... We talk beings... about this sometimes. What is it? Is it like a nightly thing? I've just been sort of teasing, but now I'm actually, I'm in my fifis about it. You guys talk every every night? No. No. Who you do with Josh. Fucking Josh Shotland gets you on a FaceTime every goddamn day. <laughs> Who's Josh? Just this guy who likes to talk on this on his FaceTime with Will on his couch without his top on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, and he frames himself just below the tees. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> just below the tees. Yeah, it's weird. Does he still have plastic on his couch? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> just when he talks to you. Yeah, the only takes a break when the guy comes, the food delivery comes. He's always like, one second. Yeah. Hey. So <laughs> wait. So how often are you guys FaceTiming? Uh, couple times a week, maybe. Higher. Go higher. Higher while you lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it every other night? No. 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 no, no, no. So another lie. You go super low or super high. No, They're lying. No. Lying. Um, no. So, but this is fun for you guys. You guys stay in contact because you're best friends and you like to keep up on each other's lives and call into reunions and stuff like that. You know, I'm fucking sitting here doing nothing. but Okay, now now what we're going to do is then we're going to take the clip of of you for the last 10 seconds complaining about it. We're going to take your your facial expression and your tone and then we're going to ask you, would you call that guy? Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> well, maybe just not FaceTime so you don't have to see the heavy brow. I've, I FaceTime with you. The last time I FaceTime with you last week and you were you were on, do we want to get into this? You were on a floaty. Oh, yeah. It was pool. Pool. pool time. Yeah. yeah. You know, I remembered I have a pool. Yeah. You know, like, he, he oh, was, I can enjoy. Sean, Sean yeah. he was floating. No, 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 no. How about this? Two weeks ago when I went to visit him, he was on a floaty in the pool yeah. at his house. Yeah. Ordering sushi from the pool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to live the good life every couple of days, you know? Way to go, JB. We're trying to get people, dissuade people from the, the opinion that we're coastal Hollywood elites. types are a bunch, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of dicks, <laughs> total douchebags. And you just <laughs> Wait, no, this is a public it. pool. But, but, I'm at the, yes. down at the Y. This is a public pool. <laughs> but yeah, in Jason's sure. defense, he picked up, he drove to pick up the sushi. No kidding. Yeah. 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 Look at you, gross. I wanted to put it in my face quicker than uber could bring me <laughs> where did you uh you didn't go to the place in beverly Glen, did you uh no no this no, was a no. uh sugar fish special yummy oh, okay. i love that uh-huh. they make a nice box down there they, they do. do you know I do. is it me or, or does the sushi delivery now it, they've kind of up things yeah uh, it used to be it didn't travel well right real yeah. slapdash yeah. thing yeah. with a sweaty yeah. you know uh plastic see-through box yeah. Now it's uh now it's a paper thing that's got nice printing and yeah graphics. it's got little sections on it yeah yeah all right let's get to the guest JB before you get to your I know you're anxious yeah mm-hmm. we got let's remind uh, our, our listener thing afterwards for yeah. our thing afterwards to yes. stick around and listen to right Sean to our yes new- it's called Goalless it's a yeah. new show from uh, Smartless Media our little podcast company and uh, I'm going to tell you all about it at the end of the episode so please stick around yeah all right tighten up guest here we go guys. I don't know if you like acting talent, 
<laughs> a lot of people do. For some reason, the three of us seem allergic to it being anywhere near our work. But this guy has got a lot of it. Oh, and if we're nice guy. to him, maybe he'll share some. He could also lend us a few of his numerous nominations and wins for his work, which he's been uh, well, he's been, oh God, it's still rolling, uh, which he's received well-deserved recognition for from all over the world. Sean, you're going to want to discuss with him the whimsy and the wonder of projects such as uh -oh. The Chronicles of Narnia, X-Men, Children of Dune. While, Will, you'll be more interested what? in the subjects covered in titles such as Shameless, Wanted, Filth, and Ultimately Atonement. He's a Scottish treasure, a Celtic F FC diehard, and a recovering video game addict. Please show some compassion and hospitality to the one and only James McAvoy. Oh, James. my God. Hey, guys, what's going on? How you doing? James. Look at him. No, I, 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 I'm a massive, massive fan. Yeah. Pump the brakes. We're gonna get. Hey, to, we're gonna get to X Men yes. and things like that. I mean, and I'm, Split. Split is one of my favorite movies. One of the best performances I've ever seen anybody ever. Oh, yeah. Dude, thank you so much. You really played like seventy five characters. Just, in that. Well, let's start with hi. Let's start with hi. Okay. Let's just I'm start just, with I'm hi. So How are you? Nice to meet you. I've always wanted to meet you. Don't choke so the excited. puppy, Sean. Yeah. Sorry. God. Um, Hey James. Will, do you have anything you'd like to say about Celtic FC, or do they go? Do they do they mess around with your Liverpool? Fans? No, they don't because they play in a different league. It was first of oh, all, don't be shitty. So, don't so be if shitty. I were a Rangers fan, then I'd be we'd have more of an issue. But but I will say one of my favorite players plays for Liverpool, who happens to be a Scott uh, Andy Robertson, who I just adore. Sure. He's amazing. And also he's one a, of the greatest Liverpool players of all time. Yeah. Kenny Dalglish, not to mention Graham Souness. But uh, Kenny Dalglish was also a, a massive, massive, like, icon for Celtic as well. So Kenny Dalglish, I had the I had the pleasure last year. I bored these guys when I went on my various trips over to Liverpool. <laughs> and I got to sit with Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> I got to sit with, with him. Well, he, so first real. of all, the last game I went to, when I went to Jurgen's second last game, he was behind me with his wife. <laughs> and, JB, you watch your manners. You're talking about Sir I'm Kenny just Dog working Rish. on fake snoring. That I'm sorry. sounds so you, real. This is you are <laughs> honestly you're about to you're it's about like to make CPAP. millions of enemies right now. No, listen, and, I love this. Show some fucking respect to Sir Kenny Dogleash. The stand up opposite says the Sir Kenneth Douglas stands at Liverpool, and he's sitting there looking at his own stand. Uh, he's an he's a fucking icon, dude. Yeah, I know he's brilliant. He's really, really amazing. He um yeah. He's <laughs> he's famously dour, but I was lucky enough to be managed by him at a charity football event once. And I wow. spent like three or four days with him during this time. Sean and, was uh, managed by a dog leash at one point in your career, <laughs> when you, right, Sean? <laughs> yeah, just a couple, just a couple tugs, and I'm yours. <laughs> I love an easy lay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, James! Good night, I'm so everybody. sorry, James. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to leave. Been on great the guys. Thanks very much. Yeah. Um, well, loved, this has been like the real middle point of my career. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking fuck! Does anybody call you Jim or Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. I get. Uh, I don't get Jim too much. There's one guy who brilliantly is also not brilliantly. He is Scottish, but he, he rather brilliantly calls me. Uh, he calls. He's called Jockey, and he calls me Jockey. And uh, a couple of mates call me Jimmy Floyd. Wait, oh, jockey? Wait. wait, they call. It, wait, why? Where does jockey come from? I don't know where jockey comes from. Jock is also rhyming slang for Scottish person because it's sweaty oh. sock jock. Uh, so oh, sweaty, really? Wait, go back to sweaty sock. Sweaty so if, sock. You're a, if you're a sweaty, if you're a sweaty sock in England, if you're like a Cockney and you're referring to Scottish people, we say sweaty sock because it rhymes with jock. So, but he was called Jockey, and for some reason he would call me Jockey. But then most of my mates would call me Jimmy Floyd. How about that? Sure, and where does that, that come from? <laughs> Wait, where does so, Floyd come from? Two of my favorite football players. Uh, one of them was Henrik Larson. His name didn't become anything to do with mine. Uh, the other one was Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. And so they used to call me Jimmy, and then they started calling me Jimmy Floyd. And I then they just it. dropped the Jimmy, and most of them just called me Floyd. And then I've got one mate who's from Newcastle who calls me Jimmy Flow. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Flow. Jimmy Flow. How's Nobody it going, calls mate? me shit. How come? I don't have a nickname, do I? You guys? Well, listen, by the end of this podcast, we're going to have a nickname. Crank for you. Uncle Grumps. Um, <laughs> Uncle Hansy. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Hansy. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch slap. <laughs> Wait, James. I have, James, I have a feeling by the end of this interview, we're going to have nicknames for each other. I feel. Yeah. I feel, I feel like we've got a real 
a real quick connection right here. Not with the other guys. No. Just me. <laughs> yeah. James McAvoy, what, what beverage are you enjoying right now? Because it's got a lot of ice in it, which I enjoy. It's soda water and lime right now. I did have a Cosmo right before we started this. No, you did not. Did, did you? you? Really? Yeah, I did. I had a Cosmo. I love that. Where are you right now? I'm in my basement. Uh, but I where? I ran back here. In, uh, in North London. In North London. Fantastic. Wow, Fantastic. it looks fancy. I want to look fancy. I know, look at it. He's just having you a little know, Cosmo, Cosmo in his face. He's got a nice painted like, wall like behind like him with a yeah. iron like window. A ho- like a Hawaiian yeah, shirt no, on look or at this. Yeah. This, is, this is my basement. This is my little man cave. I don't like that term, but it is like my little place that I get to come and be. And I've got a little sort of wanker gem over there. And I've got, um, <laughs> I've got a TV <laughs> in front of me. Gem. We're going to let you rephrase that. It's where I get stronger as a wanker. <laughs> um, I really work on my technique. I like try and make it hard for, for myself. Sometimes I put weights on my hands. Uh-huh. Um, sure, but yeah. You know, you know. I would say that you operate this very unique space where you are such a great actor, and you've Phenomenal. but you manage to kind of create. You you kind of stay out of any category. You you you're very unique. Like you've just I don't know. You've got this kind of patina about you that's very fucking. I remember the first time I was like, wow, this guy is amazing. Uh, I was watching. It was uh, Last King of Scotland, which was years ago. I know. Fantastic. That fucking oh, yeah. phenomenal Love. film, dude. And yeah. I was like. Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- this guy's a fucking, right? And then you've just, every time I see you, you kind of carve out these different little niches for yourself and you stay at, I don't know, you've got your own lane that you've created, which is really admirable because a lot of people kind of go into a kind of a cookie cutter thing. Is that something you're conscious of? Or you're constantly going, fuck, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to be over here. I want to go over here. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, look, 100%. I, I've been really lucky not to just have to play the same kind of thing again and again and again. Although, latterly, I have been looking at my fucking career. And (laughs) latterly, I've been, I've been... I'm going to want you to lay down right through this part and just elevate your head and just tell us what you're feeling. Yeah. Well, you know, I am in my wanker gym, which is where I think about myself. <laughs> my um, generally, whilst looking at myself in that mirror over there. Um, um, wait, no, keep going. You were thinking about your career and what? No, I think about my career and I'm thinking and talking about actors that I love and respect whilst doing press junkets for this movie that I've got coming out. Speak no evil. Sure. It looks so good. I think it's out now. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, huh? Yeah, it's, out it's out now. It's out now. And so many of the actors that I respect and admire, and it, I wouldn't say emulate because I don't, I don't try to emulate anyone, um, I are actors who have repeatedly kind of done the same thing. Um, and even if they're playing a character who's or a person who's in a different situation or a different scenario, which means the same thing, um, it's <laughs> it's it's the kind of the same guy and everything. And yet, I don't disrespect them for that. And yet, yeah. I've spent my whole career trying to go like, I'm going to be this guy. No, I'm going to be this guy. Right. No, I'm going to be this guy. And then, and then, luckily, in Split and in Glass, I got to do many guys all in one. Incredible. Some women as well. So yeah. it kind of makes me call into question like the fucking point of playing all these different characters when all the actors I really love are like a type. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a really, really good point because I, I am also a big fan of actors that, uh, I mean, I really respect character actors that like yourself or like a Daniel Day-Lewis or something that can really morph into somebody completely different with the limp and the the, 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 the thing and the whole. It's all but, the limp. But I, uh, but I really respect an actor that can oh. that can um, be comfortable with just disappearing and not yep. doing anything except just excuse the term uh, story servicing the story and just Gross. not not doing any sort of performance. Do you know what I mean? Like that takes yeah. a lot of talent too. Uh, and I, I I love those actors. Um, Do you know what it is? Is where yeah. listen, I can I can put it down to a turning point in my career. Let's go, guys. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> the, the interview starts now. <laughs> no, guys, it's about to get Let's fucking do this. profound. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. I've yeah. definitely yeah. got an erection. Yeah. Yeah. Not um, really talking until you say the words "my and career" next to each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I did a film when I was in my mid to late twenties that was. I can't really say what film it is because I'm going to. I'll end up slagging off it the person that I'm talking about. But um, slagging right. off means bad mouthing. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah, translated for you colonials. Um, mm. And so yeah. so it was great success and and everything went great and we got award nominated and we were like, we made loads of money and all that. 
like a year and a half, two years later, he comes back to me and he's like, dude, I want you to do this film with me. It's based on a book. And I read the book and I'm like, I love this character. It's amazing. I get the script, I read the script and they've chopped the balls off the character completely. And re- this incredibly dynamic, fucking diverse, like like acting character yeah. um, that is in the book is just this guy who's like, Hello, right. how are you? Yeah. Doe-eyed and cries a lot and like, yeah. Like does a lot of silent acting. Does a lot of movie acting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I'd done previously with this director to great, again to great acclaim and all that kind of stuff. And it was good for me, and um, and we had a chat about it. And I said, well, look, I don't think it's we've really captured who he is in the book and stuff. And we had we kind of fell out. We kind of had a bit of a tit at it, mm-hmm. right? And um, he goes, he goes, oh no, I get it. You want to do acting? Oh boy. Oh. And wow. I was like, that was that kind of made my decision for me because I didn't see this to him, but inside I was like, do you know what, mate? Yes, I fucking do. Right, it's what and, I do. And but then I have this moment at forty-five, going like, why are all the actors I really admire not huh. doing any acting? Uh-huh. And I'm out here going like, look at my lip, look right. at my lip, yeah, yeah, <laughs> look yeah. at my accent. And right. um, but I'm I like telling the story on purpose. I get pissed off doing movie acting. I don't enjoy it. And yet, I do get to watch other actors do movie acting, and I go, "Fuck, that's brilliant!" It's like, magic. yeah, but I mean, as long as it's uh, you know, not to oversimplify it, but as long as it's real and it comes from a real place, who cares about any of it? It's like you know, yeah. And James, when you say movie acting, you're talking about smaller sort of leading man stuff, right? Where you're just I'm sort talking of like, about like, right? Holy yeah, shit. acting, face right. acting. This, yeah, yeah this but is, sometimes it's great. Like sometimes I can watch something and go, "That's full." That is right. real, and I'm like, I'm there for it. Um, but nothing acting sometimes it winds me up so much. I'm with you. On um, that. And I want to watch somebody give something. Like I personally believe that the origins of performance and the origins of performance art, the orange, the orange of performance art, <laughs> yeah. is um, is in an orchard in Sicily. Um, I think right. the, the, the origin orange. of performance art comes from fucking human sacrifice. It comes yeah. from sacrificing a goat or sacrificing a baby or sacrificing a person and a bunch of people watching it, going, "Please let it rain this year." And that's the origin of theatre. That's yeah. the origin of and the person that's up there getting sacrificed, turned into performers, sweating blood, sacrificing something of themselves, whether that's literally their health, their blood, their dignity, their Mm -hmm. sexuality, their fucking humanity, whatever it is that you're sacrificing when you're on stage or on screen, you've got to leave something up there. You've got Mm -hmm. to, you've got to work. I I want to see somebody sweat blood. And that's not for everybody. Some people want to watch an actor just go like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just James, look, James, and what, they put music over it. What, yeah, what, yeah. what kind of mushrooms are you on? Because <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> and we will be right back. And now back to the show. No, no, no. I think there's a lot of truth to what you said. And you know, it's funny when you when you were describing that experience working on that film, and you said, "Yeah, it did well. We got all the awards, and then we made lots of we made lots of money." And I was thinking about, and I don't mean to get too too heady about this, but as you said, it struck me as like, isn't it funny doing this thing that you do? That that one of the marks of success is if you go to to go and do it to create art, if you will, is how much fucking money it made. And at the end of, the, and maybe I'm getting old right in this moment. It just <laughs> occurred to me for some reason. It really hit me. Like, imagine that that's a fucking measure. Of how good something is, is how much fucking money it made. And that all these people, and all of us, me included, consider what we do to be successful depending upon whether or not it made any fucking money. Yeah. I'm not even railing against the system. I'm just saying that isn't it funny? Like sometimes it hits you in in, in different times. You think like, wow, isn't that fucking... Here's my spin on it because, uh, which is maybe it sounds like I'm trying to backtrack and justify and reverse engineer something that makes me sound like I've got more integrity. But, um, <laughs> um, but uh, I think that I I do what I do and I put myself out there for criticism and not even if it's a successful piece, like not everybody likes it and you take fucking crazy criticism even in the stuff that people said was good. Mm. And um, what it means when you make some money is that, fuck, people actually went to see it and yeah. we found an audience and we communicated 
and we manage to communicate with people because that's all it is, isn't it? Art yeah. is just about communication. It, to get sometimes when we say when we're making art, people go like, oh, then they go, they're talking about art. What it means is we're trying to communicate. Art is an attempt to communicate, and if you've made some money. What it really means is you manage to communicate. Yeah, you manage to find, instead of this nebulous thing where it's like, yeah, I got this movie on a website at the moment. It's doing great. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, four point yeah. five people have seen it worldwide, and it's fucking, it's out there. And you're yeah. like, that's even you could make a great piece of art, but nobody saw it, so you didn't get to communicate. And that is something that's becoming harder and harder to do in the cinemas. Maybe it's easier to do it in the streamers, but it's also like the streamers are like this, this like kaleidoscope of whirlpools that you're getting pulled into and each whirlpool has a thousand things in it that the algorithm helps you watch i don't know but i think uh, that i think i yeah. think that's fair i think that's fair i think that's really fair it's 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 a marker of how much you were able to how many people you were able to connect with i suppose and that that makes sense how did you how did you get into this game what was the thing did you come by it honestly did you have parents in the arts or did, did, was it just on your own I grew up in um, a council estate in Glasgow called Drumchapel. Council estate is something you guys call, uh, not schemes, projects. So yeah. um, I oh. was in high school, I was about six, 15, 16. We were doing Macbeth in English. My English teacher knew a, a director and an actor who had done Macbeth in the 70s. And he came in and talked to us. I recognized him immediately because he was a, he was like a movie actor. He'd done like movies with Chris O'Donnell. And um, and I was like, I've seen you in Vertical Limit. You're like the bad guy in Vertical Limit with fucking Chris O'Fucking Donnell. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And then I was like, I've also seen you in a film with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. And um, he was pretty cool. He took a lot of shit from some of the guys in the class. Um, and at the end of it, I just went up and I said, listen, I'm sorry about that. Thank you very much for coming. If you're making a movie again, because he was a film director, would you please consider letting me come and making tea or coffee for you? <laughs> wow. And uh -huh. um, For a week or something like that. And he called back months later and he was like, is that kid still there? Send him to the production office. He was making this movie about child prostitution and pornography in Glasgow. Wow. And uh, he, he was like, here's the script, read it. And I read it and he went, come in here can you try and play Kevin, this young guy called Kevin Savage? And um, he was like, can you make yourself cry? And I'd never done any acting at this point. Wow. And I got the part and by the, we left the room and he was like, we found the guy, this is him. And do you know what's really weird, right? There was a TV show called Streetwise. Streetwise! It was a kid's <laughs> show and it was about um, mountain bike couriers in London uh, that were led by a saxophone playing Andy Serkis. <laughs> Right? No way. And I loved, yeah, man. That's and I was kid show. And I loved it. They were like crime fighting mountain bike couriers. Uh -huh. And, um, and I, I it, it was brilliant. And, and he played the saxophone. And I was like, that's Andy Serkis. He was walking into the production office. And Andy was playing a Glaswegian pimp with dreadlocks. And, uh, and <laughs> my first bit of being a professional actor was literally being told you're going to play the part. And then I walked out and Andy Serkis went, are you actually from uh, Glasgow? Are you like the real deal, like from a council estate or whatever? And I was like, yeah, man. And he was like, great, come sit with me. And he was like recording me and recording my voice. And I was teaching Andy fucking Serkis uh, right. from Streetwise yeah. how to do my for my sister, For my sister, Tracy in Wisconsin, Andy Serkis is Gollum in Lord of the Rings. He was... Planet of the Apes. He's a great character actor, also great director. Incredible yes. guy. Yeah, just a good guy. As well. Who was the director yeah. of this film, of the, the child prostitution that that discovered you? It was a movie uh, called The Near Room. Uh, it was a reference to um, a Muhammad Ali quote, talking about the space that he would go. I think before a fight yeah. where the alligators play trombones, and. Um, uh, and it was a guy called David Heyman, not to be confused with the producer who does uh, oh, Harry Potter, Potter and, and okay. since then many, many things. Right, right. But um, Scottish actor, director, a philanthropist, and um, a really good, really good actor. But I'd said to him, like, and I was not that good in the film, mm. and um, and I've said publicly quite a few times, like, I'd love to pay him back, I'd love to be in something for him. And he sent uh -huh. me something one day, and I was like, Ah, I don't think uh, it's quite right for me. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> There's not enough acting in it. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so from that point on, and then as you kind of built this career for yourself over many, many years, and you just kind of kept going up and up and up and up and up, and more 
and bigger projects, projects that have more uh, recognition and audiences are grew and everything. Is there something that you learned that was so valuable that you that you can share? Because I think you know, I look back when I was a young when I was a young actor, and I'm like, I wish somebody would have fucking told me blank A, B, and C. And then you get older and you look back and you wish there's no nobody pulls you aside and said this is how the business works. This is how this is what you should be looking for. Like I wish somebody would have told me, you know, camera adds ten pounds. Or something like that, like, or, or just the business side of it too. Yeah. Must have been driving over a canyon when you got that note. Oh, wait, you know what? Sean, you know must, what? Sean must be using two cameras right now. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fuck! Guy. You guys, yeah. you guys are harsh. <laughs> you guys are friends, right? You guys just like each him. other and shit, right? We're, just we're, we're very old friends. <laughs> Um, well, but James, so you didn't, you didn't really kind of start this super passionate about it. Like this wasn't, it wasn't your plan really to be an actor, uh, at, no. out of the gate, right? What was it? No. Wasn't it, no, so, weren't you going to maybe be a priest at one point or is that just a Wikipedia lie? No way. No, really? Deep no. research here. It's, um, it's a lie that I've told in many interviews. <laughs> um, really? No, it's, yeah, just to try and make myself sound like I'm the kind of guy you want to corrupt and, <laughs> and to attract people to me. Um, <laughs> No, I, I I considered being a very specific kind of priest, um, yeah. not a handsy one for a start. Uh -huh. uh, I <laughs> then I'm out. <laughs> we just lost Sean. Um, I I thought being a missionary sounded kind of cool because you get to go to far flung places and do far flung things and right. and and have a great time. Uh, I then started to finally find a little bit of luck with the opposite sex around about fifteen and sixteen. I went, I am not right. Uh, selling my my sexuality <laughs> to God for the uh -huh. rest of my life. So right. it was Catholicism, wasn't it? Uh, so that took me out of that. I was going to join the Navy at one point, and I was going to, and then I was going to go to university. And then I thought, listen, I did this acting thing when I was sixteen. I'll try it for acting school, the one acting school in my town, in my city, and uh, and I luckily got in. And, and this the is rest, the Royal. Is this the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama, formerly known as now known as the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. And this oh. is uh, this uh, you you don't just uh, pay ten bucks and get in to that place. This is a well, very it, very. I come from place. I come from a country with a proud history of socialist democracy. So I luckily I was the last. I think I was the last year to have their tuition completely paid for them. Um, wow. so but I, still, I it, ain't, it ain't some swinging door there. Um, there no, this is, this no, is a, was, this a high end was, yeah. institution. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of, it was, I guess it was tough to get in. I was really, I was lucky I got in at my first try. If I hadn't got in at my first try, I might have gone off and done one of those other things, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, but listen, to answer your question, Sean, I would yeah. say there's a couple of things that I would pass on. One is try and be more American in terms of what you do as an actor. Try and create your own work. Because yeah. you guys, I don't, we, I think it's changing now. But me coming up, it felt like us as young actors, it was like, you're a hired gun. You're like a mm. carpenter that's hired in. Right. And you guys, when I met you guys, <laughs> you guys, when I met you guys, you guys <laughs> back in like 2003, when I first started coming to America, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, you're like, you've got two editions a month and you've got a production company and you've written four scripts and you're like, how do you do this? Like, right. what do you mean? You got a development deal with who? I was like, what? <laughs> I right. could not believe. But it's also grown up within an industry that is actually an industry, whereas yeah. in Britain, it's, it's a little bit, we feel lucky to be here and we feel lucky to get to do the secret thing that like yeah. fairies and elves get to do. And it feels a bit more <laughs> like a cottage industry. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what I meant a little bit was like, do you do, like, you know, being an actor is plenty. You know, there's a lot of work that goes with that. Yeah. But as to your point, a lot of people are realizing the industry is changing. You kind of have to be all things in order to, yes. you have to kind of cultivate your own work for yourself. And so I just didn't know if that was something that you're doing now. Like, are you delving into other aspects, directing, producing, writing, anything like that? I'm directing at the moment. I'm about to go into prep for my first film on the 26th oh, that's of great. August. It's really wow. exciting. And, um, which yeah. is really exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't want to produce. I don't want to write. I don't want to mm -hmm. do those things. I've done mm -hmm. those things in the past and I did not find it to be my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, What's drawing you to the directing? Control, power, yeah. abuse of it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> not the paycheck. No. Not the paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Do you know what? I've, I've been looking to tell stories about my own country for a long, long time, and every single story I got sent uh, was like gritty Scottish drama. Yeah, yeah. About drugs and the kind of neighbourhoods I grew up in and, and all Transporting. that. Transporting, yeah. Yeah, and like, but actually, transporting would be okay because that was a... That was a uh, a, an incredibly beautiful yeah, incredible artistic film. way to tell stories about people who have no opportunities right. but um, likewise this is a true story about I just burped on camera really yeah, loud that's okay. that's do right. not cut that. I can smell it's it it's only audio yeah. it's only audio <laughs> audio smells um <laughs> Do you want me to tell you what it's about? Do you yeah, guys yeah, care? please. Yeah, yes, of course. It's not going to be do. out for like fourteen years. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Great. Are you in it? or Are you just going to direct it? I need to be in it. I need to be yeah. in it to get to get it Good. bonded. Yeah. Um, uh, it's about two, it's a true story about two rappers from Dundee who uh, rapped about Scottish things in their Scottish accent. They came down to London in the early two thousands and they did an audition for Sony. They literally got laughed out of the room, even though they were awesome. Uh, and they came back like a year later. They'd re-recorded the, all their demos and all their backing tracks with American accents, and they pretended to be these two <laughs> um, skater dudes from from Hemet in California. Yeah, and um, they got a record deal from the same label that wow. day. Oh my god! For thirty five grand, and they got housed, and they got given a studio, and they got an A and R rep, and for two and a half years, they pretended to be twenty four seven. Like, even when they were alone together, they pretended to be these two dudes called Cyril no. and Brains. Wow. And, um, and they <laughs> nearly so made good. it. They nearly made it. It's an incredible story. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, our, that's, that's the film we're making. That's, that's pretty, wow. pretty that's great. Really exciting. It's, called, it's called California Scheming. Oh, that's so good. Wait, who's doing it with you? It's just me on my own with my camcorder. Um, yep. <laughs> and a mirror. Just, I'm going to shoot it on my iPhone in my basement. I'm really excited. <laughs> um, we're independent at the moment. Studio Canal are involved. Screen Scotland are involved. No, but I'm I mean, it's two bunch. guys. It's you're one of the guys, and who's, who's your I partner? ain't one of the guys. I'm too old. These guys were like 19, 20. Um, uh, that's well, Will, you there. can hang on. I don't know where Will's going with this. Will, yeah. you, you got a pretty high, you know, low range there. You can play. I'm just 19, saying. 20. Can I'm you give us some? It. Give us just a little bit of rapping, Will. Yeah, just, and, uh, and Scotland and Scottish and Scottish. Scot Scot so you want, no, no, no. Hit they're me. American. Yeah, they're American. So you're perfect. Oh, exactly. oh so, Sean, listen to James's story much? <laughs> fucking. <laughs> All right, so I was so throwing, so I was take throwing this a Swiss an opportunity to audition just a little bit, Will. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm the beatbox guy. I'm doing the. No, no I do the, the beatbox. You do the rapping. No, I don't, you're rapping. You're auditioning for this. Okay. All right, never mind. Um, now, James, okay. what about now? Now, this film that I was you're rapping. Be, Go ahead. This film that you're going to be directing, the role that you're going to be playing in it. Is it a role that is going to uh, that is appropriate for you to do uh, sort of character type acting, or is it a role that would be more appropriate if you were to do that level of acting? Would you be overplaying the part, or do you just need to just be a guy? Or can we see some good hard looks? Will you just throw a bunch of hard looks? I think I think there's going to be some hard looks. There's going to be some. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. smoke that look right. hard looks. Yeah. Um, I think I think it just requires me to be kind of me. Yeah. Um, but I might get nervous and at the last minute throw in a limp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or just have the guy have a cold the whole movie. Yeah. 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 We, yeah that's a good idea. You know, He's got to be Scottish. Can yeah. I make a suggestion? First of all, the hard looks are good, so I don't want to eat into them because you do them really, really well. <laughs> have you thought about an eye patch? <laughs> hey, that's the thing. This is, if I internalize the eye patch, you will see the eye patch. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that's right. I want to talk about. Wait, first of all, I, I know probably everybody comes up to you and says how brilliant you were in Split, but I just thought it was. I thought it was like you should have won an Academy Award. Like it was incredible performance. Thank you. And and, Thank you. I, and tell me, you you played all these different characters because the guy was a fucking serial Split killer personality. or whatever. Yeah. But um, but also these different accents and different characters, and you buy each and every one of them. Like to your point, it what they were all real. They were all very real. So tell me about the process, and and were you scared to do that many different kind of people? Uh, I was not scared. I got that job pretty last minute um, because it was meant to be Joaquin Phoenix. Oh really? Excuse me, I just burped again. I'm drinking fizzy water, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's all I drank. It's all I drank. Um, <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix was supposed to do it, and because he had a relationship with M Night Shyamalan um, from like Signs, and mm -hmm. was he in the Village as well? I think he's in the Village, isn't he? Yeah. And so. um, 
And then I don't know what happened, but like two weeks before they started shooting, he read the script or something and went, I don't want to do this. And <laughs> for whatever reason, he fell out. And so I get the call saying, hey, do you want to read this? It's super secret. You've got to read it and then like give it back. And I was like, cool. And they were saying it's M. Night Shyamalan. And I've been a fan of loads of his films. And I was like, definitely. It came to me and I thought, this has got the potential to be really good. Like yeah. it could also go off a cliff and be really bad. But I think that's the case with most really interesting or fun things. Right. They could go either way. That's not a criticism of his material there, by the way. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of characters. It was a lot of work, but it was well written. And I thought it's good hard work. And as long as I've got enough time to come up with this, we can figure it out. But yeah. is that it was down to the wire, try to find all the characterizations. The last one we found was at the table read. In fact, like Jason Blum had flown in and like people for Universal had flown into Philly where we made the film. And and um, uh, I'm doing this table read going like, we haven't really found the character Hedwig. And at the last minute... Um, he uh, modeled it after Blum. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just drove around LA in a van all the time. Yeah, oh my God. I just um, want to say to Blum, you finally made it onto the podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, hey! He's, he's listening. He's listening. He's in the queue. He he's coming in. Oh, yeah. oh we yeah, love him. Very much yeah. like we he's love be here him. Soon. We're going to bring him on. We hope he's good, man. He's cool. I think their company do good things. For Tracy, J Jason Blum is Blumhouse, the Blumhouse Pictures, all that. And he like does that. also. He also does drive around LA in a van. So James is right <laughs> he about does. That. this. Uh, yeah, a plumbing van. But this new film is a Blumhouse as well, right? Speak no evil. This new film is a Blumhouse as well. And it does, yeah. Blumhouse does so well. The trailer looks great. I think so too. Yeah. We love him. We are going to have him on. But I, wait, I want to hear. So you're there. You haven't found the last thing. You're at the table reading. It's like fucking down to the wire. It's down to the wire. And um, and the director, Knight, goes, uh, listen, I think for the character of Hedwig, the kid in the movie, he's like, I think you should do it with like a sibilant S. And I'm like, like a lisp? He's like, we say sibilant S. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll do it with a sibilant lisp. And um, <laughs> and I'm like, right. what? I'm just going to throw this in to the table read. I was like, are you kidding? Oh, fuck, okay. And then within seconds of doing it, I was like, this was a good call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and suddenly the whole character like came together. Um, but no, yeah. look, it was, it, was, it was a lot of heavy lifting that job, but yeah. it, like, if you can lift it, then it's a good lift. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm speaking sure. like I'm a total bro. Yeah, but again, <laughs> yeah. for for Tracy, um, you know, you, you, when you shoot a movie, it's all out of order. You're not you, you're not like taking care. Of, you do one character and then you're done, and then you, in, in James's case, you do another character and then you're done. You're so you're probably playing what sometimes three or four different characters on the same day. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that's and, crazy. And 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 would you agree that you know? You seem to be the kind of kind of real actor that will find the version of each character inside you, um, and and if that if that yeah. is true, then when you're playing in a movie where you're playing multiple characters and basically you know going through schizophrenia, does it ever become super? taxing on yourself to explore all those different parts of yourselves and try and try to try to be as authentic and as believable as possible and it sort of like triggers and brings these characters up in you and you don't know who the hell you are then when you go home or you're just doing a lisp I'm just <laughs> <laughs> you you see me man <laughs> you see me um I think there's only really been one time in my career where I brought it home. Actually, there's maybe three times in my career where I brought it home. Uh, but I do like what you just said. It is always me. Mm. It doesn't matter how yeah. weird it is or how wacky it looks or how different it seems from my personality. It's always me. There's yeah. no becoming the character. It's always me. There's yeah. always... It's some version of yourself, you know what I mean? So that's all you have to give. Right. And, I, and if you, if some other actor says, like, but no, I actually do transform into someone else, like, I, I'm cool with that. I'll believe them too. But yeah. for me, it's just, it's all you have is your own tool, your own body. But the only jobs that I brought at home were Macbeth, because it was all about losing children for me. And that, just the whole of Macbeth... I, I was apparently not an easy person to live with when I did Macbeth. And then <laughs> um, and then whenever I've played a victim, I've played a victim kind of twice now, maybe in a Danny Boyle movie called Trans, and then a movie that I just made in Germany. And I, I just felt awful about myself because I was such a victim of circumstance and other people's control. 
I, I did not enjoy that experience. Mm. And that's the only times that I've ever brought it home with me. Mm-hmm. Those three. Wow. We'll be right back. All right, back to the show. Now, in this trailer for um, Speak No Evil, you, by the way, you look huge. Like you were, like, did you go to the gym? Like just for this part? Cool it, Sean. Dude, I'm just asking. I'm like, I'm like six foot nice. four. It's on my IMDb page. I'm like bigger than Hugh Jackman. What are you talking about? Are you really so, six four? No, Sean. I'm five seven. I'm five, five, oh, seven. are you? Are you? By the way, Sean, you said it. I no, just want to say totally... it should be noted because it's to be fair. You said that you always often bring bring it home from a movie. Sure. Sorry, by, by it, I, I mean craft service. Right? You usually <laughs> bring, bring a lot of it home with you, don't you? Just bags, yeah. <laughs> I, wait, I, I, I just came home from, back from a family reunion. There's all this extra food there, and it's just like, there was like a bag of donuts. I grabbed those. I grabbed oh, a couple no. other things. But yeah. Did you really? Yeah. But, but there's all this extra food, and I felt so bad throwing it out. Anyway. Think, what, what is that image of, of you, Sean Hayes, with a ba- bringing a bag of donuts onto yeah. a plane? Hugging everybody like goodbye with you dick. slinging the bag over their back <laughs> while you hug them all. Looking, Hollywood looking bad pop- boy steals donuts from family <laughs> yeah. reunion. Yeah, powdered sugar Hollywood just on people. <laughs> Hollywood bad, bad boy. boy, Sean No, Hayes. wait. You do, you do look so buff in that trailer. It's like crazy. You look like you worked out crazy. Do you know what? I didn't do it for the movie. I just, I just did it for the fun. Um, mm-hmm. I did it because we were in the lockdown. We were in pandemic land. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just had my second child, and I was like, do you know what? I can't let having a child again stop me from exercising for three years. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to double down, and I started eating crazy amounts of food and lifting crazy heavy weight. Yeah. Um, and two years later, this script came along, and it was like, oh, perfect, this works. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about when you decide to toggle between um, uh, mediums, when you go between uh, theater and film. Um, yeah. Because you've done an incredible amount of very prestigious theater work, and I would imagine that's Thank very, you. very rewarding to you. Yeah. Um, but you also have to pay the bills, and you're a big yeah. movie star, and you probably enjoy doing that stuff too. So how do you decide between, is there a rhythm you like to maintain, or is it just kind of uh, job-to-job mm. kind of thing? Rhythm... Is a dancer. Mm. Oh, it's a speaking my language. Honestly, wonderful. <sighs> wait, wait, let wonderful, us try to get some James. music in right yeah. here. <laughs> wonderful. That was wonderful. Rhythm. Uh, I don't know if there's rhythm. It, my agent, Ruth Young, who I've been with since I was 20, uh, always says, do you want for them, do you want for yourself? Mm. And it ends right. up being more a little bit like, do like four for them and do one for yourself. If I come back and I manage to get to do theatre, it has generally over the last 15 years been with Jamie Lloyd, uh, the same director again and again and again. Mm. Uh, and the biggest thing with theatre for me is it's a risk because it's the most exposing thing you can do as an actor. Um, and you have to go up and sacrifice something every single night. Mm. And if it's shit, you're sacrificing and it's like going down like a cup of cold sick and the audience are sitting there literally going like, yeah. or they're asleep, yeah. right? And you can yeah. fucking see it. Ugh. And that kills, man, that hurts. So it's the, re- whereas you make a movie, like the audience experience of that is like time traveling a year and a half in the future and you're not even there. Like right. yeah. you can get back and you get paid like way better and it's a different thing. But it's not. It doesn't have the creative fulfillment for you, does it? As, uh, it as does. Theater? They both have the creative fulfillment. But if I was going to be in a bad play or a bad movie, I'd rather be in a bad play. If yeah. I was going to be in a good play or a good movie, I'd rather be in a good play. What about the time that it takes? The the the, the commitment you have to make ahead of time to commit to that play, rehearse, put it up, and you you can't you can't leave until it's done. Like how many how many how many really killer jobs have you missed because you've committed to a play and you're like, oh fuck. Had no way of knowing that script is coming. No many, actually. No? I've missed know. some killer jobs because I didn't get them. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I've missed... Uh, but then your career pans out differently and you're glad you didn't get it. You yeah, know? yeah. Everything yeah, right. happens. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there one job that, you, that you're comfortable telling us that you wish you would have yeah. gotten? That, yeah. yeah, totally. totally. Which one? Deep stroke. No, uh, yeah. I... <laughs> 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 Um, I Good night, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> the Broadway show yeah, with yeah. Sean Hayes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So I went up for Pirates of the Caribbean uh, when I was N- Nezobody. And yeah. um, this is Orlando Bloom's part? 
Orlando ended up getting it. It was me. I think I remember it was a guy called Paul Nichols um, and Orlando and someone else. And I don't even think Orlando was auditioning, actually. I think he was off in Middle Earth doing that those movies yeah. with Peter Jackson. And it was me and these two other guys who, Sean. I think... Yeah. Yeah, no, that's where it was. Yeah. Middle Middle Earth. Earth. I believe it was the uh, yeah. Lord of second, the second film in the... Well, at that point, they were in Middle Earth, of yeah. course. But, uh, yeah. but yeah. you know, yeah. the precious. I believe they were in the land of Mordor where the shadows like. Yeah, Mordor. Um, Mordor. <laughs> and uh, mm. I went and screened camera test. I, I felt it. like, I think I got really close to it. I ended up having to do this camera test with Kira Knightley, who I later ended up doing a tournament with. Anyway, got real close to it, and then it never happened. But that was mm. one that I was like, I would get to go to like sunny places right. and be on ships sunny and place. dress dress like with a wig on uh-huh. and like yeah. shoot like guns that have powder that come out of them right. because they're muskets, yeah. man. Yeah. And like like oh Johnny Depp ended up being in it and Kira was amazing. It yeah. was it was And there were like five of them, right? I Six know. of them. There right. were like five teen of them, and um. I was, got, I was, I was kind of gutted about that one that I never right, got. Yeah. It. I understand. Um, but then my career went a different way, and I was so happy with how my career went that I was very philosophical about it and like totally fine with it. But yeah. at the time, for about a year, I was like, man, the one that got away, you know. Yeah. There no. is one more I could tell you about. Yes, please. Yes, but I don't want to tell you about it. No, let's just perfect. have one more sip. One more sip. <laughs> um, there was a big one there was a big one and the director who cast me in it he uh, I'd seen him really early in my career for a small part in a movie playing like the younger version of one of the main bad guys at the beginning of the movie so I'd only be in it for like 5-10 minutes but it was like an awesome part Yeah. Mm-hmm. and I came in for this audition and by the end of the audition like we'd shared so much life shit he was crying I was crying like the, the audition went amazing the, like the acting was like it went great. And as I'm walking out of the room, he's like, he's like, oh my God, well, we found the guy. It's him. We found the guy. They never even called my agent. Christ. Right? Wow. And then when you saw who they cast, did you, were you like, oh, that's, that's why I didn't get it? No. No? <laughs> I, <laughs> you still I did didn't not, understand. I did not think great of their casting. However, that was like the, the, the snidiness of youth movie. But years later, there's this big, huge, gazillion dollar movie getting made and they come to me and mm. they go, listen, we would love you to meet so-and-so with this director. And so I go and sit down with this director and I'm like, you remember me, right? And he's like, no, I, have we met? I'm like, I, I love your work. And I'm like, no, 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 we met. And I relay the whole story to him. And he's like, nah, don't have a single memory of that dude. Oh, and I'm like, wow. what? We were in uh-huh. tears together. You said we found the guy and looked right. at me as I left the room. And so did you do this big film for him or did you tell him to go fuck I off? actually did sign on to the film, but it <laughs> took three years. And yeah, I was like, I, I yeah. wasn't trying to like take him to task. I was just right. like, dude, this is funny. We need to talk about this. Right. But um, uh, it took like three years to actually get it going. And by the time those three years had passed, I had a kid and this movie was being filmed on the other side of the world. And I was like, I am not going out there for a year and a half of my life to go and do right, whatever. Good you for know. You. What, yeah. uh, what, is, what does Jimmy Flau do on the uh, on the side, like when he's not acting? On the side? We're yeah. talking about that, bro. Drive a, drive a cab? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? For what do you free? Mean? Just get my shits. Um, what do I do on the side? Yeah. Do you know what? It's like being a dad and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being a guy at home, and uh, I'm like I'm working out. Pr- hey, no, hey, not hey, anymore. Hey. I haven't worked out in about six months. But yeah, yeah, I was doing a lot of that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, play video games with my kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about what about? How, didn't you burn one of your one of your video games uh, yeah. uh, because you were too addicted to it? Wait, what? Yeah. So it's aptly James had game, a problem. I had a, a real problem. I don't. I don't like to talk about it, but I feel Let's like talk about the more it right I can make now. people aware, maybe I can help someone else. Yeah, you know? why don't you help somebody out? Exactly. If one person, if you can save right? one, person. save a life right now. You have a little gaming issue because I do too. I play a lot of games on my phone. What do you play? What do you like playing? Oh, just <sighs> d- the dumbest shit. Candy no, he plays fucking Candy Crush. Yeah, it's not yeah, gaming. Yeah, you don't He's, talk to him, James. It's He's not. Playing ga- candy I played crush. a lot of. You're, I played Call of Duty stuff. I played Call of Duty with the same dudes for like ten years straight, like fucking five nights a week, man. I know you. I feel your pain. During the pandemic, I had my my eldest son was eleven or twelve. Or two, how long ago was that? He was like eleven or twelve. I started letting him stay up to like two in the morning to play Call of Duty with my friends and me. And and his mom calls me. She's like, 
he, you cannot let him stay up till fucking <laughs> two to play with you and your moronic friends. Right. Yeah. Like, the note, my friends, they're like laser dude six. Yeah. And he's also. These are my it. comrades. These are my brothers. We're in <laughs> war together. These aren't my the squad. friends. The squad. Right. So you are you're 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 in remission now, or, or are you? I'm are still in remission. Dabbling? Started. Listen, I've 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 lapsed a couple of times. The first time I realized I had a problem, I was making a movie in Ireland with Anne Hathaway, mm -hmm. and it was called uh, Becoming Jane. It was about Jane Austen, and uh, I'm getting I'm getting home every night, and my wife at the time had bought me an Xbox and this fantasy role playing game called Oblivion: The Elder mm -hmm. Scrolls, aptly. Yep fucking entitled oblivion because that's what it was taking my life yeah. and then um, i remember getting home from work at like seven or eight or like nine one of those crazy hours that you get home at in the movie business and i order a pizza and like a two liter bottle of coke or as we call it in scotland a two liter bottle of ginger any any soft drink fizzy soft drink can be called ginger, uh, ginger. <laughs> two liter bottle of ginger and a pizza hut and um and i stick in oblivion and i go to oblivion and then i just remember going i just play for five minutes more i play for five minutes more and then my driver is waiting to take me to work at 6 30 in the morning oh, and i was God. and this is like not the first time it happened on that job either and i was like something has changed Wow. And um, I press the eject button and the CD comes out of the, the disk drive mm -hmm. and I go over to the gas stove and I turn on the gas stove and I just, I'm standing there like this going, like, how am I going to, how am I going to like fall in love with Jane Austen today? <laughs> and I'm like, because like, you know, and, <laughs> and then I just drop it on the gas stove and I just watch it melt and then oh. I, and I, <laughs> I walked away. That's a bottom. Yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. Like people, it's it's a yeah. It's a and your bottom thing, is only when you decide to stop digging. You know what I mean? That's yeah. up to you. Yeah. But um, yeah. the the pandemic, I had the same thing as you, man. I had like yeah. three buddies. We all went, hey guys, should we just get like a should we yeah. all get like a like a PS4 or something? Like that? And we're like, yeah. we'll all play some shooting game. Come right. to like two years later, and we're like. John, John, I'm going in. I'm going in, man. Bite me up. Bite me up. Push, push, push. Push. Yeah. <laughs> it got, I know. Oh it got God. so fucking crazy. And then I recently had one of my friends say, hey, we're still playing. I'm like, no, I'm never going. I can't do it, man. Not right now. I think I'm the last man standing. I'm the last guy still playing. You are. You are still playing. So you yeah, managed, I, you've managed to find a, the right size for it. The right size for my addiction? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you're yeah. not staying up until dawn anymore, are you? No, 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 no. There's, there's, there had to be a cap. Do you know what? To be honest, I came back from a job in Germany where I did a lot of it because I was just on my own and I didn't have my family with me. And that was quite good. And I bought a little laptop to make it like portable. Yeah. But since I've come home and I'm getting into prep and I'm casting and I'm working on the yeah. script and all that, there's just no time for it. Yeah, it's all good. Actually, stop. it's been kind of good. Yeah. But because um, it's time to be an adult at 45. What game is it? What game is it that you're. Call of Duty, man. Yeah, oh, of course. Awesome. Like during the pandemic, it was yeah. it was running around for dance, getting killed by like twelve year old guys in China. Dude, like, how crazy was that when they did that that first? Uh, what, what do they call the the big map that they dropped during uh, the pandemic? The fucking um, for dance. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking crazy, wasn't it? It was crazy. But, it was so but with, good. But within a month, those kids were so good at sniping that you couldn't even last for a minute. Like you'd land and you'd be dead. We were. We were bad at that game for two years. My yeah. squad and I, we were, what were the names? There was K-Chuck. There was, there was a, because it was the pandemic, one of them named themselves Touch of Flu. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was Severe, Severe Shock O. And I was, I was Walker Janeway, which is a character I played in a kind of a middle-class New York play once. And uh, I'm like, there's people running around going like, I'm going to kill you, Severe Shoko. I'm going to kill you, Touch of Flu. And then going, I'm going to get you, Walker Janeway. Yeah. <laughs> it, was so good. it was like so bougie. But um, yeah, no, it was... It, and you know what I found as well, right? I've been pals with those guys since my early 20s. And what was really special about it was that we'd be running around going like, push, 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 I'm going in. Fucking hell, John, support me. So when did you say that you got that procedure done? Oh my God, Dude, that's yeah. really interesting. I never knew that about you. And we would just like, bleh, in a way we never had. 
Yeah, you know yeah. what? It's funny you say that. As much as I sort of rail against it too, and I do love gaming, is that I stayed connected to a lot of guys. We have this crew of us, the clown crew. We're still on a we're on a text chain that we've been on since two thousand seven. Uh, and that we all play this game together. And uh, these guys know, and Jason especially knows, because we did a few things in the gaming thing. And it's like me and Giles, who goes by Kid Lightning, and Mark, who goes by uh, Foreman Beast. He's known as Beast to all of us. Mm -hmm. They all call me Wendell, because my handle is Wendell Leaf, because it's named after my favorite hockey player. And we had, we've had so many moments. I was texting with the guys this morning, our buddy Jerry, who we also call Gary for no reason. <laughs> Gary just had his second kid and we're all congratulating him on the thing. And we I all think. know each other from the gaming thing. And they, so there is a community thing. It's really, yeah. it's quite nice. I don't yeah, know yeah. if you remember, Will, you try to get me like years and years and years ago, well, try to get me on one of those groups. I played for maybe seven minutes. Yes, and I, I I couldn't exit the thing. I just would get shot like right every single time <laughs> right away, and I couldn't figure out like so. I'd be like, let's try it again. Let's try it again. And we'd, yeah, we'd start again, and I'd come out with these guns, and everybody just bang 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 like I'd just be dead in two seconds. It was but awful. Is, oh, it's but it is a, a good way to connect, and that's uh, that that yeah. part of it. I do I do uh, I do like that part of it for sure. For we sure. were so bad at it for two yeah. solid years. We never got any better, and yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we laughed our asses off. I love yeah. that. Well, James, you're a lot of fun. We've laughed yeah. our asses off with yes. you today. And we, we sure appreciate have. your time, my friend. Um, very nice to get to know you. Huge yeah. fans of yours. Massive. It's really cool to meet you. I oh, have you a guess? great time directing. Yes, um, I talk about you all the time. I just think you're an incredible actor. Thanks, you guys. Speak no evil. Uh, out now. Um, yeah. It is, uh, is from the great Jason Blum. Um Mm. Directed, written by James Watkins, everybody. Speak no evil. Check Speak it no out. Evil. Go and see yeah, it. Yeah, Jimmy Frow. Thanks, Jimmy Frow. Jimmy, Jimmy Frow. Jimmy Frow. Jimmy Frow. Jimmy Frow. Jimmy Frow. Thanks, you guys. Wow. Guys, thanks a million. Seriously, love your stuff. And as performers, actors, writers, directors, you are fucking amazing, the threes. Uh, no, thank man, you. Thanks. It was really, really okay, great yeah. to meet yeah. you, my friend. Thank you. Really see great. you around, guys. Yeah, All right, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, James. Yeah, bye. bye, buddy. Wow. Hey guys, yeah. um, we're back. We're back. Uh, we're back from commercial. Hi. Um, do we do we do commercial after? Uh, no, after we, we don't. No, we don't. So. We just do. You just remember hearing just... a commercial play? You were just he just hung up. Uh, right, 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 right. So guys, that was James um, McAvoy. And you know, what? I got to tell you, I'm not buying the accent. I think he needs to work on that. Yeah. Really, um, you don't think it's? Yeah, I mean, he, everyone knows he's from Dayton, Ohio, um, and he's been working on the sky. Dayton, things. Ohio. Um, um, yeah, no, he's you know he's great though. Like I didn't ask him about Narnia and like Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I was obsessed. Or X Men. I mean, or what's X Men. I know, I know. I'm not like a massive X Men thing. Like I, I think oh, he's great. Well, walk like, us yeah. through it though. Yeah. I, what, what, what's missing for <laughs> no, you with that? I, no, I, I like it. It's just uh, I just well, never it's hooked into. It. I mean, I watch them all. And they're sure. great. I just I'm not a rabid fan. What about of, Narnia? Of the series. What about? But Narnia? yeah, the the Narnia things. I wish they. Those that the wardrobe was that you so didn't like great. or the witch? No, so he played um, the the fawn. What was his name? Tum, the fawns. Tumnus, Tumnus, Mr. Tummy, Tumnus. Tummy sticks. Something like that. And uh, didn't didn't you guys like that book when you were a kid? Of course. Never read it. Oh, it was the of best. Of course, I read the whole series. They were fucking great. Yeah, so, so, so great. great books. Great books. But anyway, I didn't get a chance to ask him. When he popped on, I was like, oh, I've actually always wanted to meet him. And so I got to meet Who him. Who wrote those books? Quick. Uh, 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 C.S. Lewis. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Um, hey, Willie, are you still doing that book club thing? Yeah. Hmm. When's that launching? Book club with myself. I don't know. We are going to do, yeah, we are yeah, We are going to be launching the Smartless. It's been a time thing, but we are going to do the uh, um, Smartless book club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, because if you, which, if you mention a book, I will read it and we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, JB, thank you for sending us over those book recos yeah. from your pal, from Laura. Uh, which is uh, always, it's nice to get book recos. Yeah, because you don't want to, it's like it's like television recos or, or movie yeah, stuff. It's, like it's you, hard you wanna... to fucking narrow it down. There's so many yeah. fucking books out there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm he kind of like, yeah. James kind of looks like if Heath Ledger had a baby with Jude Law. Right. You know, I was thinking he looks, um, he looks a lot like Josh Charles, our friend Josh Charles. Do you guys know Josh? Oh, he does yeah. remind me of Josh Charles. Certainly. Josh Charles. I, do. Uh, I love Josh. Baltimore Orioles fan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible actor. Well, because he's um, from Baltimore. He's a wonderful uh, bloke. He, he is a wonderful bloke, bloke in wonderful. Scotland. 
No, they don't. But you know what? Uh, That's okay. I think they <laughs> might sometimes. Uh, that McAvoy, that Jimmy Jimmy Flo, is, is what Jimmy we call him? Jimmy Flow. Flow. Jimmy Flow. Yeah. yeah, he's got something about him, doesn't he? He's, he's just cool. He's very down to earth. He, he's got a real sort of authenticity to him, which yeah. I uh, you I like really the cut respond of his chip? to. You I like I the cut of his chip. Very much like the and cut you of his could, chip. You could hang out with that guy. Fuck I could yeah. hang out with that yeah. guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's really cool. We would we would hang. We would do some hard hanging. Oh. And, and, I, and every single be, time he plays, I have a like, lot of comments for people who walk by. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a lot of like, look at this fucking guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and every shit. every time he play he plays a different character, I totally uh -huh. there we go. <sighs> Bye. Bye. We really snuck that one up on a shiny Bye. boy. Nice going. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smartless. So, Jason and Willie, we have a new show on Smartless Media called That Goal. I'm very, very excited. Sorry, I just cut off when you said the title, Goalless. Goalless, right. Now, Sean and I are excited about it, too, but yes. here's what's good. Yes. Sean and I are much more sort of like the, uh, a bit more of the typical American audience that does not know as much about soccer Correct. as you do. So right. you have taken that into account with the way in which you've gone about developing this podcast. Correct. Yes. Well, Correct. I brought in. I want to introduce you guys to the great, the greatest. Russell Howard. Right. Yeah, Russ. yeah, Russell. Hello, Our Russell host. Howard. Russell Howard. Hello, Russell hello. Howard. Here he is. Yes, Russ. Here. So, Russ, I'm going to let you describe Golas because football is my soccer, whatever you want to call it, is my passion. I love it, mm. but you are our host because you are even more passionate and have grown up in this milieu. Go ahead, Russell Howard. Yeah, and also, by the way, for my sister, Tracy, one of the most successful stand-up comedians in the UK. And not yes. related to Ron. No. Just, no, just, just to be clear. Yeah. Just no, to be clear. Not, not related Howard. to Ron. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian from England. Yeah. And I was, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I was given the opportunity to do this podcast about football and basically, it's going to be like a late night sort of show about soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. We're going to talk about the Champions League. Oh. We're going to be interviewing ex-pros, current pros, celebrities of the like, football. It's yeah. everything you can imagine. Do you have a band? Do you have a band? I don't have a band, no. Yeah. And we'll get you one of those. Okay. We'll get you a small band <laughs> with like a slide, we'll get slide you one flute of and a hi-hat. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. If that's the first complaint of the show, it's good. It's, there's a lot of we funny chat about football, but where's the band? Yeah. Yeah, could, what use about the could use a band. You're going to talk about Champions League. Now, now Jason yeah. and Sean, Champions League is the, is the, is the uh, tournament that they do yearly of all the top, basically, in essence, the top four teams from all the domestic leagues all over Europe and the UK play against each other in midweek games throughout the year. And finally, in the spring, they narrow it down. Uh, they start in group play, then they get yes. into elimination. And, it gets and, will, and by the way, uh, uh, Russell, Will has uh, got me excited about soccer. So I actually oh, it's the, have it's the best. Yes, and Champions League football is incredible. At some point, though, at some point, we're going to have to figure out, so you don't have to keep saying soccer, I mean football, over and over. We have to figure out what to call them. But anyway, that's... I'll call it soccer for you people. I don't mind. Right, it's yeah. just <laughs> at home, I can't. If I say football, it's, you know... I'll, I'll well, but this podcast can be just... listened to all over the world though, right? So what do you, you... Do you prioritize the American audience, the global audience? What do you do? I don't know, Jason. It's yeah. very difficult. We'll, we'll wait to see the to... numbers. Yes. Whoever <laughs> listens <laughs> most gets yes, soccer or football. By the way, but the way Russell said, I don't know, Jason, that sounds like some PA on Jason's set when he's like, what's for lunch, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I don't know, <laughs> oh Jason. Fuck Can you fucking yeah. leave me alone? There's a lot of dips, uh, Jace. Just but you, we know we've been through this when, we had, when we, we had David, <laughs> we had David Beckham on. I think we were talking about, you know that soccer is actually an English term, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know this. Well, exactly. But it, it was whatever we want to call it. it yeah. I, I can't call it soccer. It would be like calling my mum mummy. It right, just, right. It feels, yeah. it gives me the right. ick. Yeah. But you know, you're, yeah. the British accent covers you. I think anytime you say football, people are going to think you mean soccer because, yeah, because that's you're, true. Saying, you're saying that's it with true. a British accent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll just be, it's so, like, 
not only do I love football, but it's such an innately funny sport. Like, yeah. the supporters are hilarious. I yeah. don't know if you two... If you've never been to a live football game in England, if you go... A long just time ago. being... Oh, it's the best. I like the, the singing. It's incredible. How do it's you learn... Singing. Is there a website you can go to to learn the chants before well, you get to it. a game? That's such a good point, because... It, like, they must meet up in a pub and right. harmonize. Yeah. So there must be, like, football hooligans who are sort of sat there in a council flat going, oh, look to me for the changes. Here we go. You're going home in a fucking ambulance. Come on. Right. All together. <laughs> when I listen to goalless, I want to learn about these things. I want you to take care of the dingbats like me, too. Yeah. You know, yes. not just the smarties like Will. Russell, you're, you're, you're a Reds fan, yeah? You're a Liverpool supporter. I am a Liverpool fan, yeah. Yes, yeah. same here, uh, hardcore. And I have oh. been, the, I'm newer, obviously, to it. It's only been a, like 10 years for me. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah. So what yeah. was your in? Oh. What was your in? My, my, uh, a friend of the podcast, Chappie, Mark Chappell, uh, who's an uh, Englishman oh, who lives, lives in London. It. There it is. Yeah. Uh, here's the Chappie mention. <laughs> he got me into it like 10 years ago when we were working together, and I've become full, and I, you know, now look, I'm I'm into Arne Slot. I'm so happy he's there. Uh, mm. And but Jurgen Klopp has been my hero, my north star for years now. Mm. I had the opportunity to hang out with him a couple of times in the last few These years. Are the coaches, let's know. Uh, wow. It's just been incredible. Yeah, and I've and I've gone out of my way to learn some of the songs, some of the like you know we conquered all of Europe. We're never going to stop. From, from Paris, Paris down, to, down Turkey, to Turkey, we've won, we've won the fucking, fucking lot. Oh, Bob Paisley and Bill Shankly. Let's oh, do it. Knows the it. fields of Anfield Road. <laughs> we are loyal supporters. And, and we, we come, come from, from Liverpool. Liverpool. Now, how do you learn this? Ale, ale, ale. Yeah, is this I mean, on a, is it on a website? Like, how do you? Yeah, you, you can look. On, can yeah, because you're like, what, what are they I love singing? Most about it is it clearly is on a website, but there's yeah. the fact that Will Arnett has clearly been in his shower. So yeah, you get <laughs> oh, sure. It. You yeah, have sing. yeah, of course have. you have. Who gets to decide what songs are going to be sung on what yeah. week? Like, do well, they this get is changed? The point. Yeah, because and they're often really funny. I remember. There's a brilliant story of the Rangers goalkeeper, Andy Gorham, who um, basically came out and said he was a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And his own crowd that week started chanting, there's only two Andy Gorhams, two Andy <laughs> Oh, <Gorhams."> my gosh. <laughs> so it's, that's what I mean. With football, there's, all, there's sort of like this sort of galaxy around it that right. is sort of just n naturally piss-taking. Like some right. of the best uh -huh. moments at a football game happen with the crowd. Like footballers get abuse... Like, and I'm a stand-up comedian. The heckles you get are nothing compared to footballers. I remember seeing, I went to a Bath City game. I don't know if I can, this is, there was maybe about 500 people there. Yeah. It was Boxing Day. And the they were, it was a pre-match warm-up and the goalkeeper was quite a heavy set lad. And uh -oh. he was just getting one of the balls out of the net. Uh -huh. And he looked at this kid who must have been about 11. And he yeah. said... Did you have a good Christmas? And this little kid went, looks like you did, you fat cunt. And <laughs> there is no, there's no world in which that's allowed. Like, yeah. this, this poor guy just I had to that. take it from an 11-year-old kid. And it's that just vicious. This is the kind of flavor and spice we want to get from you on but a weekly basis. But that's what I mean. Basis. But it, it, yes. Was so, yes. it was so fascinating. And if you've never been to a football game, I remember taking my wife to watch Liverpool Paris Saint-Germain and she was just fascinated. All the sort of French football fans took their tops off and they were kind of swinging them around. And there's, it, it's like this weird church that just goes crazy, Anfield, on a European night. So basically... That's what the podcast is. I mean, be. it's gro I love that, and it's growing and growing and growing. I mean, like well, what's, I, I can't, what's so what, crazy is I, I was going to say that. Sorry, Sean, but but I was going to say that kind of that vibe that you get. I remember, like I said, I remember a lot. Just a couple of months ago, I was at a, at Anfield and sitting and and watching. I think maybe I told you guys this story. Watching Sir Kenneth Dalglish sitting right behind me with his wife, and how many times they've been to Anfield. He was as a player and a manager. Blah blah blah. And and them singing, uh, uh, um, you'll never walk alone. You never walk alone. And his wife and his wife dabbing her eyes. Oh, it's so moved well, by it. Well, he's an incredible man as well. He's incredible. The the to get serious, the Hillsborough disaster, um, yeah. where the, a lot of Liverpool supporters died. He went to yeah. every single funeral when he was Did the manager. He? Yeah, wow. every single one. And so so the club is, you know, it's in his bones. So I think that song, you know really takes into a special it's, place. It is beautiful. And the whole stadium sings it. By the way, we're sitting there and and the and the uh, the stand opposite us is the Sir Kenneth Douglas stand. Mm -hmm. And he's 
sitting right by like, it was just incredible but Which he's is a bit harsh that they don't let him sit in his own stand I know no you know I mean? it's like no it's better going, it's better he gets to so look, at, look at it he yeah. gets to look at it. You know, Jason and I shared an office once, and Ooh. I'd had... Oh, this is exciting. And it was a big, long office, and I had this huge Will painting from a show. <laughs> I wasn't there a lot. And I had this huge... He used to give me shit, and I'd be like, I don't want to be in the fucking... We had this... I had this huge painting of myself from a show. And one day when <laughs> he, he was there, I, I had it put it behind my desk, behind yeah. where I sat. So he's always there. And so he calls me one day, and he goes, why did they put this fucking painting of you? And I go, because when I'm not there, you still get to look at me. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I remember I remember doing that years ago. I had loads of kind of posters of various stand-up shows that I'd done. And I kind of thought, what would be a nice thing to have them? And then I put them up in this room in my house. And then as soon as I put it up, I just realized it was such a mistake. <laughs> because it just looks so weird and arrogant. I don't know if you've ever seen that MTV Cribs episode of Mariah Carey where she goes to like this of course I have. room yeah. and she reads all the all the yes. notes from her fans. It was yes. just like, oh, what have I become, man? I know. Yeah, I know. I know, right? What a house that was. But at least we have you, and it's you and, and Chris Whittingham as well, is that That's true? right. Yeah, he's a CBS yeah. commentator. Um, yeah. He's a funny guy, and he knows loads about football. Now, so, this would be this would be your this would be your sidekick? Uh, he is. To, he's to my co-host. To continue with the, well, with the, co -host. the late, late night show uh, yeah. analogy? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's basically, he's got all the knowledge, and, uh, and we're just going to kind of riff, and then we'll have kind of celeb guests, and it's going to basically be... It's, it's the dream job for me. Will, are you going to be the first guest? I'm hoping I will be a guest if they'll ask me. Are you you're waiting for someone to reach out? Well, yeah, man. I mean, I well, I can to... reach out right well, now. I don't want to. Well, do I don't want to be presumptuous right and think that they make some news. Want to yeah. fucking talk to me? Because uh, I'm just. I would a... love to talk to you. Would you? And <laughs> there it is. We have, have our first ever, booking. Have, have you ever played at Anfield? That would be my first question. I've never. I've never played. I've been on the pitch. Save it for the show. <laughs> yeah. Save it well, for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't get. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, try to make I've seen, Mo, I've seen Mo Salah getting a rub down after a match. Oh. Okay, <laughs> and and I had and was that I at had, the changing room or did you just that was you at got the a hotel. really good telescope? No, 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 that was <laughs> yeah, through the just blinds. Like that. Yeah, yeah. This one fucking truck wouldn't move, and I finally oh, got a glimpse. Yes. <laughs> I got the look at the angle I wanted. <laughs> I had Darwin Nunez walk by and, and basically give me a high five, holding a towel, and he was just in a towel. I mean. I, oh. Some Hang, were cool you in the changing room? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right Jesus. after the match. That must have felt so awkward. It was very awkward. What uh, do you do? In, uh, in a because basically they're all having a shower. Yeah. And, you know. You're just waiting with a stack of towels. You that was, you, <laughs> does, anyone want a Luke, does anyone want a Lucas aid or, or a Gatorade yeah. or, or a power bar? Would you I like tell a you what they did. I tell you what they didn't appreciate was my boner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, what you should have done. You should have got in the shower. Yeah. You should have got in the shower with them. I know, I should have. You know I mean? That would have, now you would have wanted to have me as a guest if I'd been Fully in the shower. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Uh, but there's so much to talk about. The football, as you said, Russell, it's so endless, yes. the stories. And that's what drew me into football, how I became it. I love sports, but I became a football fan once I started to understand the stories of who this manager was, who this player was and stuff. That's actually what got And I started watching all the docu-series about the various things. So we want to bring on Golis, kind of bring listeners in so they can start to understand the culture of football, of soccer, right? That's yeah. exactly it, yeah. I, I need that. I'm actually excited about yeah, that. Yeah, me too. So it premieres, it premieres uh, guys, when? 19th of September. 19th of September. Thursday, September 19th, and two new episodes released each week every Monday huh? and Thursday, which is yeah. great. Is that it's going nice. to be great. Russell Howard and Chris Whittingham, yeah. Great. That's it's right. so fun. Yeah. If you ever find yourself in England, I've got two season tickets to Liverpool. Have you? So I, I would love to bring you along. I think that's and more could, for me and Sean, not you, Will. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. But no, no, I could probably get another one. Uh. But and to be honest, Will will be down in the showers. Yeah, yeah he will. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting them ready. Just getting the temperature ready. Yeah, that's Ooh, anybody anybody want to get ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh. Just putting your elbow in. Yep, that's fine. Oh, that's good. That's so good. Very nice. Uh, Russell, Russell, thank, thank you, you so pal. much for your time. We're so excited for Goalist. It's going to be great. Goalist. Yeah, thank, thanks for it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Nice yeah, to meet you. You too. We'll see you there. Cheers, fellas. September, September 19th. September 19th. Yeah. All right, chaps. Have a good day. See you later. Thanks for us. See you, buddy. Bye, bye, bye.